This screencast is on shifting both demand and supply curves. In this screencast, we will go over the determinants of demand and supply, and then we'll also properly indicate the direction that price and quantity go in when both demand and supply shift at the same time. When you're given uh, any kind of question, one of the things you want to look at is how they apply to the determinants of supply and demand. And in some scenarios, like the one provided, you're going to have a situation where two different things are happening simultaneously or at the same time. So in this situation, it says the Midwest is facing an extremely cold winter. At the same time, the government has placed environmental restrictions on drilling in protected areas for natural gas. So what happens to the market for natural gas? Well, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go through your determinants of demand and supply to see how they apply to the situation. So the first thing that it says here is that the Midwest is facing an extremely cold winter. Um, and going through the determinants here with supply, you have the number of producers, technology, input prices, government regulations, expectations of the future, and prices of related goods that they produce. None of these go with the Midwest is facing an extremely cold winter. So then we get into the determinants here for demand. And you've got your number of consumers, the income, the price of related good, future expectations, and taste and preferences. Um, when we look here at the number of consumers, because it's extremely cold and people are going to need the gas in order to heat their homes, there's going to be a larger market in demand for the natural gas. So the determinant that you can have here is the number of consumers. And what it shows is that this will increase the demand. The second part of it says, at the same time, the government has placed environmental restrictions on drilling in protected areas for natural gas. Uh, when we talk about the government here, we get into the government regulations. Uh, what they're doing is they're limiting or restricting, and that's an example of a quota. And so for this one here, the determinant of supply is the government regulations. Because they're restricting the amount that can be placed, this would be a decrease in supply. Okay, so now that we've figured out the determinants, we now need to figure out what is happening with price and quantity. So the place to start is with our graph for natural gas. And just as a reminder, we have an increase in demand and a decrease in supply from the above scenario. For the market for the natural gas, you have your title that goes up top. Because we're giving the market, I can just put a P and Q, because uh, that's the price and the quantity for natural gas. You have your downward sloping demand curve and your upward sloping supply curve. Uh, these intersections together give you the equilibrium price and quantity. And so you can see here, everything is denoted. And again, my subscripts need to match in order to be able to know that they're going together. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to add in here this increase in demand because they're facing an extremely cold winter. And at the same time, the government is restricting the amount of drilling, and so that is decreasing the supply. In order to figure out the new equilibrium, I need to look at, since these happened at the same time, I need to look at the new D2S2 intersection. And that gives you the new equilibrium price and quantity. And so what I can see here is that the price has gone up and the quantity has not really changed much, but in this graph here, it's looking like it has increased. When you have a situation where you are changing both the supply and the demand curve, there's something that is going to be dependent upon the magnitude of the shifts. And in this case here, it's going to be the quantity because the supply, the decrease in supply and increase in demand automatically are causing that price to go up but the quantity is not really changing that much. And so that's something that we call indeterminate, or also another way of saying it is ambiguous. 
Another way then that you could think about this though, instead of the graphing, because sometimes that might make you a little nervous of relying on the one that really hasn't changed to be the indeterminate one, is you can stack it. When you go through, what you just need to do is list what's happening with price and quantity. For an increase in demand, that causes an increase in price and it causes an increase in quantity. A decrease in supply causes an increase in price and a decrease in quantity. So it doesn't matter which one is shifting more, price is always going to go up. What is dependent upon the magnitude of the shift is the direction that quantity is going. And again, that is why quantity is indeterminate. Just to show you one more time about that indeterminate, here is the scenario. But in this first graph, what's happened here is that notice demand has increased far more than supply has decreased. And so when that happens, price goes up and the quantity goes up because that demand is having a greater impact than the supply. In the scenario over here, what you see is that demand has increased, but supply has decreased at a much larger rate. So price has gone up, but in this case here, quantity has gone down. So when you're thinking about shifting two curves, the two curves of supply and demand, something is going to be indeterminate. It's either going to be price and, or quantity. When we're looking at it in this sense, you can easily see here that I don't care which one you shift more, price is going up, but quantity is dependent upon the magnitude of the shift. If you create a graph where the shifts are quite similar in size, then what happens is that the one that for sure is going to change in a certain direction is going to have a much larger change than the other where it's dependent upon the magnitude of the shift. And again, if you don't want to rely on the shifting to figure out which one is indeterminate, stack them because the directional arrows for price are always going up, so price has to go up, but quantity is going in two different directions from the shifting of these curves, and so that is why that one is indeterminate.